It's special guest time on the podcast, which is all about the world of marketing on television through TV shopping networks and infomercials. Are we on the air? I'm your host, Sean Wilsey, and for over 29 years, I've hosted shows on cable shopping networks generating hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, and now I want to be your guide into this world explaining how it works, why it works, what doesn't work, and introduce you to the people who are making the the success that it is today. And a couple weeks ago, we started our interview with Mr. Steve Bryant, took a little break for the Thanksgiving holiday, and now... Uh, Steve is back with me, and we are going to pick up just right where we left off. So let's not waste any time. Let's get back into things where we had left off. And for anyone that hasn't listened to the first show, please, right now, go back, listen to that one first, and then come back and continue here because we had just finished chatting about how the people that get into this job, hosting on a television shopping network, think that it's... Uh, you know, it's so glamorous. It's, oh, I'm on TV, you had said. And the reality is, to quote you, Steve, no, you're selling crap on TV. But this really isn't a traditional television television job, is it? I mean, I, I desperately wanted to be a TV weatherman. And while I was at QVC, I was uh, taking meteorology classes. I yeah. actually got two years of meteorology at, at Drexel. Um, wow. And... Yeah, I, I was, uh, uh, and I and I did I did very well. They didn't want to let me in because they said, "Well, you know, these are all honors classes uh, that we'll have to put you in, and these are really smart high school kids." I said, "Hey, as I recall, I was a really smart high school kid. Let me let me give it a whirl." And, and, and I, I held my own after Gosh. two years. I I, I didn't. I, I thought about it and thought about it, but things were going so well after Barry Diller came on to QVC. Things were going so well, and it was so progressive. I mean, we we had pink, we did a Pink Floyd hour that did three hundred thousand dollars at three o'clock on a weekday afternoon. Wow! Um, and and uh, Rolling Stone shows, uh, Carlos Santana shows, <laughs> where uh, Carlos Carlos couldn't make it to the show. He was touring, I think, somewhere in, in Latin America, and his management said, you know, he really. He'd really love to be there, but you know, it, it, we're, it, you can't get him back from the tour at, at this point. So, you know, we uh, we know, and I was very flattered. They said, "We know your host Steve can probably handle this by himself." I thought, "Wow, I was flattered." Yeah. And I did, I did like a behind the music on Carlos Santana. I had my Gibson SG Standard, which is what he played at Woodstock. Right. I bought that new in '68. I had that wow. on the set. And I had I had my Paul Reed Smith twenty four fret solid body, which is what he he I, he plays a Paul Reed Smith now. It's a signature model for him. But I talked about the difference in sound and how you know the the uh, the SG suited exactly what he was doing then, and how as he mellowed and started to write things like Europa and just these beautiful melodic things, how the Paul Reed Smith the the, the tonal variety it provided. And you know it's like it's like this geek show, yeah. and everything sells out. The show was the show was done like like twenty minutes early, and I to this day, in fact, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, uh, he sent me an autograph poster, which which wow. just blew my mind to my brother in music with oh. love, Carlos. You know, I oh thought, my god, that was I know, and that see stuff oh. like that. It was it was so it, you did you tune in, you say, wow, there's a whole Santana show, and he's he's talking about amplifiers that we did the rolling stones and i talked about keith richards and the five string tele which i happen to have yeah i, I have a, a a telecaster and i just took the six string off and talked about five string open g tuning etc cetera, etc cetera. so the, the music shows were were incredible i mean they they brought in so many new names and yeah. so many male customers as well i mean they're just just tons and tons of people that had never shopped with QVC. It's kind of like the the Star Wars shows, yep. the uh, Star Trek shows, all the sci fi shows. They why is they, it? They did. You, no, go ahead. Go I'm, ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry, you please. Um, because it, you really touched on something that for since this generation, since this generation, excuse me, since this industry was born, there has been the constant hunt hunt for the male customers. We got it for a long time at shop nbc with the watch programs um mm -hmm. you had it at qvc 
and that's been it. I, I mean, yeah. other than that, Shop HQ is slowly phasing out their men's network bulldog because it, they yeah. were losing money on this thing. Why Big aren't time. men? Because on paper, you would think men would be the most logical to be watching. We hate shopping. We don't want to be dragged to the mall. Wife says go to the mall. Oh, no. But men just don't get into this. Why is that? A lot of it, a lot of that responsibility falls on the networks themselves. Yeah. We tried to sell men's clothing. And QVC, of course, they, all the channels are, are celebrity crazy. That's true. Because when I think when I think kitchen and good good cooking, I immediately think of Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> you know, it's, oh. it's it's just well, well it's, just, it's just ludicrous as George Foreman, who good by the way point. is the coolest guy in the world. He is just so cool. I've heard anyway, nothing but good things about but, him. Yeah. Oh, he's he's great. Well, see the 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 Sultan Company that made that grill, it died. I think they made it. I think you were t- you told the story. It was the Hulk Hogan grill. Yep. And it died as the Hulk Hogan grill, and then that he comes on and he's so likable and lovable and just real that, that it just, it just takes off. And the deal they cut, I heard this from, from Ron Popeil. What's that? Uh, it, it, he said that the people at Salton freaked out when they realized how many grills they were selling the first year they had to cut a check to Foreman for $140 million. Oh, oh my <laughs> And they Lord. tried, they tried to renegotiate the deal and you know, Foreman, He's a very smart man. He yes, says, he oh, is. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with the deal. We're good. Let's, let's keep wow. going. <laughs> yeah. Cow, they they, no they had no idea. No idea it was gonna it was gonna take off, take off like that. But no, oh uh, with 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 the absolute uh, you know love of celebrities, they had Regis Philbin had a line of uh, men's clothing. Okay. Uh, I don't died. even remember that. I swear to God, I do not remember that. Wow. It was real quick. Real quick. Uh, also, <sighs> um, Randall Cunningham, who, by the way, is 93 feet tall. Little known fact. I mean, Fun fact. I, I, felt, I felt like Joe Pesci. I was yeah. like, Holy good Lord, look, this man is the tallest man I've ever seen in my life. And, and again, very cool guy, very nice guy. He had a line of men's clothing. Eh. And, and look, he always looked like a gajillion dollars. Yeah. So, yeah. But if you're 93 feet tall and you got this beautiful suit on, you're going to look like a gajillion dollars. The rest of us schlubs, eh, you know, we look OK. <laughs> but 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 he but anyway, so he had a line of men's clothing. It didn't it didn't work. It wasn't for lack of trying. So we you know, that didn't work. We had a line of and this the one that really got me was we had a line of men's sweaters. <laughs> A line of men's sweaters that was uh, made in upstate Pennsylvania. Right. And I was so excited about this because, hey, you know, an American made product. Wow. American made. Absolutely. You know, (laughs) absolutely American made. uh, Just just, you know, homespun. Uh, I went to the mill which is a two hour hell drive up the Pennsylvania turnpike uh, about two and a half hours up the Pennsylvania turnpike, the, uh, the Northeast extension as they, as they call it. And everything, I thought the stuff was really cool. It was all cotton sweaters. They made them all there. They designed them all there. I wore the sweaters for uh, maybe about a month before we did the show. Some of the other male hosts wore them. We had the premiere show, <laughs> nothing. Wow. Uh, well, here's, and I got to, th- I wondered about this because I thought, boy, you know, Regis died. Uh, Randall Cunningham died. Yeah. Uh, also, Gary Collins. Gary Collins oh, did a line okay. of sweaters, of sweaters. And um, yeah, uh, mm. he was, he was okay. Anyway, Gary, Gary Collins did a line of Ben sweaters. And uh, they were nice, but eh, they didn't care. What finally occurred to me, was we were selling men's clothing the same way we sold everything else. And I thought, if it's supposed to be different, it needs to be different. We need to do something. And I, I came up with an idea. I came up with an idea that I said, look, this is, this is going to be a long play. I said, let's do a show at 1 a.m. Eastern time. Right. 
let's let's have music on the show, live music, and we'll sell the music. So they'll they'll we were already we were doing that already, but I said let's let's have a show where we'll have kitchen stuff and we'll cook we'll have an audience we'll have a live audience and i was surprised so many people we had to turn down so many people so many employees wanted to be guests at the qvc cafe wow. um and they they the sets and props the what the, who were fabulous are just unbelievably don't you just like anything steve I, uh, yeah but i'm not talking about them now. okay anyway the Sets and Props did such a fabulous job. It looked like a hip Soho cafe in, in, in New York. It just it just looked great. The stage, everybody was there. We had acoustic alchemy. I've written a great story on my blog about the, uh, the whole acoustic alchemy uh, appearance. They were so wonderful. Uh, we had the cast of Smokey Joe's Cafe. Oh, wow. I love they that. They tore it, tore it up. And there was a woman... And they did. They had rehearsed, but I was on the air while they were rehearsing, so I didn't see the rehearsal. Yeah, there was a woman, um, and she was she was heavy, a very very heavy set woman, and uh, very pretty, very pretty. I I always maintain size and beauty are mutually exclusive, but it doesn't you know you're big, you're small, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. She was just beautiful, and and she could sing, you know, like like an angel. So they're doing the show and she's singing and dancing and everything. And she jumps off the stage. I'm looking at this. This is live TV. And I'm thinking, oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. You know, she lands on one of the round tables and it falls forward. But she had planned to do that. Oh. So it falls forward and then she hits the ground and then tumbles out of it. And then just go, you know, it doesn't miss a note. Oh, doesn't Lord. miss a stinking though she's wireless and she goes back i mean it was oh my god it was so so the idea of the cafe was we start off with music and food stuff but then as the cafe really starts to get going why couldn't we use it to show to have people wearing like especially guys wearing the clothing Sure. at the cafe yeah and to chat with them about it to to to, to pick somebody to say look we're going to give you this sweater i want you to wear it for a few times out out, in the, out and about and then come to the cafe as a guest you wear it and i'm going to talk to you about it and just see what you know what do people say what what's going on he said i don't, I don't want this the the, the the same old same old crap like oh people think it's real nice what's something edgy something you know the people say you know like uh you know you can't say hey i, I wore this and i got I got lucky the other night. No, not, 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 not that far, but, yeah. but come close, come yeah, close. Yeah. You know? So, so sadly it cost so much money to do the QVC cafe because oh, they had to have a no. full crew, the audio crew, the, the everything. I mean, the resources were enormous that it took to do it. And it was, uh, uh, it was BD. Yeah. It was an AD. It was, it was BD before Diller and they, they canned it. They oh, can it. It, it. it just, I know it, 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 I, I look, I understood. I understood it just, it just, but we had, I mean, we had John Tesh because John Tesh had a great band. Oh, we had John Tesh on the air. Yeah. He was, he was, he was excellent. Um, we were supposed to have Taylor Dane and she stiffed us. Oh. <laughs> she, she, she bumped her head getting into her jet. Oh. <laughs> I, that's the lamest excuse I've ever heard in my oh, life. But anyway, give me a break. yeah. So, um, so uh, anyway, so so that's you know that, that that's the deal that that it they keep trying to sell men's products the same way. Yeah, couple couple of years ago, uh, QVC, a couple of executives got a hold of me and said, I was, when I was still in California. They said we want to do a show for seniors. Hmm. I said, I think that I think that's smart. Yeah. I think that's smart. I said, and you, you know, so we have hosts that are, you know, in their sixties now, but you know, you, I think it's okay, but I really look like an old fart. So that works. Um, so we have, you know, we have you and uh, you know, you have a name and people still, people still know you from uh, you know, from, from your blog and, and uh, what have you, we'd like to use you as the host for this. And I thought, boy, this sounds great. And then they showed me the rundown and it was the same old, same old products. Ugh. 
just mm. with an old fart selling them. Yeah. And I said, guys, what, what? I said, there's so many cool senior products. I said, I'm not talking Depends no. or any of that. But there's so many great things that older people would enjoy and not just those mobile mobility scooters or whatever yeah. to indicate that we all have to we all have to use mobility scooters, although God, I want one. No. Anyway, they do look uh, cool. I have to agree. They look cool as hell. Yes. I have I have an electric an electric scooter that uh it's one of those things with fat tires on it and stuff yeah. that I uh, uh, sadly, I can't. I can't cruise up and down the aisle at the grocery store. They throw me out. But, uh, but no. I, but there's so many things that they could do, and you, there's experts. You, you could have books on, and maybe books on tape, because seniors, a lot of seniors, even with glasses, can't read that well. Yeah. You know, with the, with the, they can read fine, but they can't see the print. And you know, we could have books on tape and have an expert on to talk about well. You know, a lot like uh, like Susie Orman talking about money. Uh, yeah, she'd be a, a, a pretty good because she has things for seniors. Yeah, have her on with the senior thing. But don't just have the same old, same old crap. And no. don't sell it the same way you've been selling everything. Like with with uh, uh, if you're going to sell golf stuff, sell it. And, and it's sort of like Saturday Night Live. I said, I don't think it has to be live. Go out to the damn golf course. And film a film a presentation and edit the you know be Jesus out of it so it looks beautiful. Yeah. And you know sell golf stuff out on the golf course. Yeah. And and and, and you know and and have have the whole ambiance have the, and again that that yeah that cost a couple of bucks that's going to cost more than plunking down in the studio and turning the lights and the camera on. But but that to me I think is why why the men's products have have yet to succeed and bulldog. Would, I mean, I I admire the effort, but again, they did it the same yeah. way they do everything else. And I'm thinking, this is okay. This is just bad. Yeah. I, I felt I felt bad. And we, you know, uh, former former colleague of mine. I won't I won't mention names, but I, I felt really bad. Uh, he he left. I know who you're talking uh, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt I felt really bad. I thought, damn it, because I I thought he had found. He's a good guy. He's a and great he, guy. I thought he'd found his, yeah, yeah. And I thought he'd found his 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 niche. And you know, yeah. uh, well, hey, uh, it's I, I'm amazed. I, I I don't wish anybody ill. I'm amazed they're still on the air. I don't know where <laughs> yeah, the money's coming know, from. I know. It's, a lot of us have wondered that for a very long time. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, Steve just really got me thinking, and and I hope anybody <clears throat> listening to this realizes the importance <clears throat> of. Um, but, but of this customer, because especially as the customer for TV shopping gets older, as we continue to age, you have to remember, I've never understood the, the, the fascination with the 18 to 49 demographic among advertisers, because at, at one time, I don't know if it's still true, one of the most expensive full page ads in any magazine that you could place was in the AARP publications. Seniors yes. have money. Seniors have disposable income. And mm -hmm. so why someone hasn't even more gone after that customer is a mystery to me. And so I'm sorry to see that they executed that so poorly because I think that there's something there. I, I would, I'd I'd go after that more than I'd go after the men customer, to be honest. I think that there's something there. Um, I agree. I, I, t I totally agree about the, about the seniors. And, of course— you see this as much as I do. They're going the other way. Yeah. They're going for they. They want to get the kids. And I could. Yep. I can give them chapter and verse. Let me. Let me give you the history of Q two. Oh, oh Jesus! With the puppet. Oh, oh Joe, don't don't even. I love puppets, but not that puppet <laughs> that they had on Q two. I thought. It's like a pedophile's delight. There's a little know, kid. Was, Hi, how are you? I'm here with all of you. Shut up. <laughs> you know, and, and you bring up since you mentioned Q2, you just you you've I, I've totally I have pages of questions here I haven't touched yet, but we got a good conversation going here, and I want to continue this because one of the things I noticed recently on Q2 is they had uh, uh, at least two hours because I, I I tuned in a couple times where they had the remote guest, no host. It was strictly yes. the, have you seen that? I think, I think that's sharp. 
I think that's very sharp. And that's, yeah. that's a, I, to me, I think, I don't know how you feel, but I think that's a great use of that channel resource. Yeah. That, because, because especially like Isaac Mizrahi, Isaac Mizrahi, and look, he and Jed are great together. They are. He doesn't need her. No. Just, just go. Just, just be Isaac. And I think that's cool. You yeah. know, you, you, you designed it. You had it made. You know what this thing is, and you know how ladies are going to wear it. Go. Yeah. I, 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 I think. How, how do you feel about that? I think we're going to start to see more of that, and I, I, I think especially. Too. I, I had just now. This is is from a fairly reliable source. Uh, I had heard that the in-studio guests, at least at home shopping, are probably a thing of the past now, with the rare exception. Yes. It's mm. COVID has changed the industry where it's all going to be remote. And gosh, if I can eliminate the cost of a host, uh, a how many people crew, wow, that's a lot of money potentially that these networks can save. It is. It is. I mean, that, that to me... Because uh, they had a whole guest department. The w- one thing I really liked about working at QVC when I had my dog Mandy, if I brought Mandy in, like if it was going to snow and I thought I was going to get stuck there, I would bring Mandy in. And the guest coordinators, there were I think three of them always on duty to take care of the guests. So there's three salaries right there. They would always take Mandy to behind the desk and feed her until she burst. I mean, they, you know, she was she loved she loved going to QVC because it meant food, yeah. lots of food. <laughs> oh, I'm um, sure. But but uh, but yeah, so they don't have that that whole expense. They don't have the green room expense. They don't have the the food yep. expense. Uh, I know we had a uh, a guest one time. I actually had him on twice. His uh, sadly, he has passed. Uh, they they got to do something about cancer. They got to do it, man, because it's taken too many, too many, too many people and Amen. too many good people. His name is name is Artie Traum. Artie is uh, the brother of Happy Traum. Happy is the guy who does homespun videos, all those great how to how to play oh, virtually yes. any instrument. Yeah, uh, the heart art. Uh, Happy Traum, that, that's, his, that's his real name, Happy. Uh, but his, his brother, Artie, was one of the greatest New Age guitarists in this country when, when New Age mattered back in the 90s. And he had, his album, Cayenne, was number one for weeks and weeks. And I, I met him at a party and uh, was telling him about the, the uh, we did a show called Jamming in the Kitchen, another chance to push the envelope out. Mm-hmm which was sort of an, ad, an adaptation of the QVC cafe, but just without a set, without all the rigmarole and, and things. And uh, he was a guest uh, twice. And he said, well, he said, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I said, I'm, I'm, my wife and I are vegans. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, he said, are, are there any vegan restaurants? I said, well, I said, we have uh, craft craft services. I said, I'll just tell them to, put out a vegan spread mm-hmm. and they'll, they'll, he said really you can do that i'm thinking this guy's been playing like at nbc and all these they don't they don't have vegan spreads we had, so he had a vegan spread and then then he even said to me he said well he said now he said uh, it's about a five and a half hour drive so he said i'll have to get out of there he said i hate to drive in the dark these days um he said but it was summertime so he said i, I could yeah. probably get home just at the starting to get dark and i said well we'll get you a hotel room at the sheraton he said really I said, yeah, Artie, come on, you're 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 playing for free. What, what the hell do you want? You know, we're gonna gonna plug your CD, but uh, and sell your CD. But then, then anyway, so so but that expense for that one guest, you just multiply that across the hundreds of guests they have in a week, and that's a you're right, that's a sizable chunk of change they're going to save. Steve, I can't tell you what a pleasure it has been going down memory lane and learning a lot. Because I, I, frankly, I really did. I learned a lot from you, a lot more than I, I thought I was going to. Where can people find you on social media? Well, Sean, thank for first of all, thank you for the opportunity to oh, do this. My pleasure. Uh, I have a blog. I have a blog with uh, over 160 stories uh, from. My my career at QVC, my time in advertising. Um, uh, one of my my favorite stories is the story of the Great Ohio Cheese War. Um, oh, you're making that this, up. This, I am not. I am not making that up for 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 a moment. Imagine imagine the uh, 
Ohio State Fair. Yeah. One of the biggest state fairs in the country. Be- beautiful event. I mean, it just, they, they do it really right there. Everything's great. So we had an Ohio cheese vendor and we decided to, you know, to take the, the host we really wanted to be killed oh, no. and give him a sample tray of cheese and send him out to over 6,000 people oh, with enough no. cheese to feed about four oh, people. No. <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave it for there, but that, that's, that's one of the, uh, one of the stories uh, on the blog and that's Steve Bryant blog.com. Just uh, Steve Bryant, all lowercase, all one word, Steve Bryant blog. Dot com and you'll go right to the stories and also a lot of my music uh which i'm proud to say a lot of things are, are happening musically now uh i have a christmas song that's going to be played on oh, uh, nice. sirius xm nice. on their on one of their christmas yeah i the, the, <laughs> kind of i i mean it's online royalties but it's still you know still. better to kick in a pan yeah yeah that um another company that does uh uh music for TV and movies is pitching my song out to all kinds of TV and movies. So, so that's a good, that's a good thing. It's very tough to get accepted by them, but they, mm-hmm. they took this one song they really liked and said, yeah, we, we think a lot of movies and TV shows would like to use this. So, so that's, that's a nice hit. And um, those two also, one of my songs was selected. There are all these alternative revenue sources that musicians and songwriters never had before. One of my songs was selected for play on airport PA systems around the country. What? I know, I know. You, you, you'll be you'll be walking in the airport, and all of a sudden, there's there's one of my goofy songs oh my on God. the uh, on the thing, and the royalties on that are, are not bad. <laughs> wow, that's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah. The uh, online royalties. So, so the music's over on YouTube. If you just search Steve Bryant or or by Nam de Plume, uh, Steel String Slider, all one word. But Steve Bryant, you'll find me. There, listen, there's there's several Steve Bryants on YouTube. There's a great bass player, a really gifted classical composer, and me. So, so it's pretty easy to <laughs> tell and who's who. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's uh, this other guy yeah. over here. But uh, anyway, the, I got the good one, there, didn't I? Like, there, there you go. There you go. The I, the classical composer was busy, and the, and the bass player said, <laughs> "Who are you?" No, yeah, I, anyway. also, I got this one, but I'm, I'm glad I got this one. Anything else? Well, thank you. But I mean, that's where you can find me. Okay, thank you very much, Steve Bryant. Oh, what a great guy he is, and uh, so nice to come on the show. Appreciate that. Uh, Listen, thank you, most importantly, for downloading this episode. Like, comment, share, most important things that you can do for this. Uh, It would also be great if you follow me on Twitter. Sean Wilson, my full name, is how you can find me on Twitter. Same thing on Facebook, S-H-A-W-N-W-I-L-S-I-E, and on Instagram, at S. Wilson. Thank you for downloading this edition of Are We On The Air? This is Benny King Bobby Production. Yes, I know, Travis. That's why we give such bargains. (laughs) 